Do you ever come across some genealogical problems that are pretty complex and a standard pedigree chart and group sheet just can't help you map it out to help you solve your cases? Are you looking for a tool that can help you analyze all of these different clues to see how they interconnect? Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee and this is Family History Fanatics. In a previous video, I showed some pretty interesting tools that can help me analyze some information about individuals and two individuals that I was trying to compare. Those were called mind maps. So mind maps are great when you're writing. Mind maps, you take a topic and then you break it into subtopics and break it into subtopics and so on and so forth. And you tie these pieces of your subtopics together and it helps you write a paper. Mind maps are also helpful in engineering when you're trying to develop a process. You can map everything out. Now when I'm working on a case study in genealogy, I like to call them clue webs because it's not that there is a subtopic and a subtopic and a subtopic of a person. There's all these different pieces of facts that I can pull together in order to make a case. And when one little clue, clue web overlaps another person clue web, then sometimes I can make relationships in that way. And so whether you call them mind maps or you call them clue webs, this is a really cool tool to help you solve complex cases. I'm first gonna show you some examples of some clue webs that I have used in teaching and sharing here on YouTube, and then I'll show you how to create them in Google. In a previous video, I shared this web to help me analyze a tree that I discovered on Ancestry.com. I started with Charles and I added his birth information, then I added his marriage information. And notice I truncated some facts about his children being born because the names and places and dates for the children weren't as important as the fact that five were born in Perry and five were born in Cocking, and then the whole family moved over to Groveport. So do you see how the clue web doesn't have all of the details? It just has the clues that I need to help me solve the cases of my family history. Now, you can often take two clue webs and combine them together to see how people interact or don't interact. So in this case, these two individuals do not look like they intersect and therefore I can't create any kind of connecting line. And to me, that lets me know that these individuals don't belong together. In another case study that I have, I talk about Earl Wiggins and William Geisler and somebody named Cox, and they're all buried in the exact same family plot. And the question is, are there any lines that connect these three people together or are they complete strangers? And I can put multiple clue webs on a screen in order to try to solve my problem. Now, here you can see a husband and a wife, the facts about the husband, the facts about the wife, the her parents, his parents, two of their children, and facts about them. Notice that, yes, you could find a lot of this information on a group sheet, but I'm truncating the facts to see where things intersect. And then if I take this clue web and put it on in place here, then is there any information that connect these individuals together? And if it doesn't, then I know that this clue web goes over here and these individuals do not intersect and therefore are probably not related. Uh, here's another version of a clue web. You have the person in the center, his parents on the left, his wife and child on the right, and then facts about each of them. Notice here I was able to add a residence information. This is where they lived as a family and to see if that is a piece of information that I need to know um, to help keep him separate, to keep this family separated. 
And here is a definitely complex clue web that has a lot of people, and then I can actually tag on more facts. So we have that William from the previous slide. We have his parents and his siblings over here, and then we take his father and connect him to his grandfather and grandmother. Oh, and by the way, she married him. And oh, by the way, these three people are buried in the same location. And then we come down and we have William's mother and her parents and hit her sibling. And oh, here's a sibling spouse. And oh, by the way, did you know, maybe there's some um, additional information of how these people intersect. And so these clue webs can become very complicated to help you see the interrelationships of people and such as this little fact right here. He would be on a group sheet with this person. He wouldn't be on a group sheet with this stepfather, but it's interesting to know the three of them are buried in the same place. So clue webs become pretty exciting things. So how do you make a clue web? Well, in Google, we can start a new presentation. You could probably put, put it in any um, a Google Doc, but I found the presentation works the best. So here I am in presentation. I'm gonna get rid of these pieces of information right here. And I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna go click on Shape and go to shapes and get the circle. There really isn't a oval. The oval and the circle are the same. What you need to do in order to get that circle to show up, once again, click on shapes, go to circle, hold down your left mouse button and drag it to create a, an oval shape. And once you release it, it looks like this. Now, if you wanna change the color, the infill color, you would come up here to fill color and we can make it a yellow if we want. Now, in order to put text inside here, we need to come up to the text box and then we're going to draw a box right on top there and we can type in Charles Gordon. If you wanna make it larger, you can change the font, you can change the size, you can change the color, whatever you need in order to tell your story well. There we go. You can also um, align it to the center. There you go. That's your first clue web. Now what I like to do is I like to center the words inside the shape. And so I left mouse click and hold on the words until I get the red cross beams and then I can let go and the information's in the center. Now another centering that might need to be done is come up to this alignment and then go to the middle. And now the words are, are in the middle. One other trick, if you left mouse click on the words, hold your shift key down if you're on a Windows machine and hold uh, click on the oval, now you have these two items selected. Right mouse click and press group and now these pieces go together instead of one moving and the other moving later. Um, sometimes it doesn't hold the exact uh, alignment when you click on this different parts of it, but generally speaking, you can move the whole thing, if that makes any sense. Okay, so now we're gonna draw an another bubble. So we know that he was born in Pennsylvania. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna draw an ovally shape. And now it's on top. Well, I want it to actually be below the name. So I right mouse click, go to order, and go send to back. Now that it's in the back, then I can click on the text box, draw it like I did before, type in born 1801, and he was born in Pennsylvania. Once again, align the information, and I can uh, left mouse click, click on the oval, right click, group, and now this information is grouped together. When it pops up, if it pops up, then go to order, send it back, and now it's in the back. So I can decrease the size of the oval just because the um, birth date isn't, in this case, as important as the name of the individual. I can right-click copy, right-click paste, and now I have two ovals. It always pops to the biggest front, to go order send to back. And now I can put the death date in. Good died 
let's say 1873 in Ohio. So let's say Charles gets married. We can right click, copy, right click, paste, and now I have Charles over here. And then I can just change the name to Nan uh, Jane Fickle. And now I have a bubble. So if you want to link these two individuals together, what you need now is the line tool. If you hover over the oval shapes, you can get these dots around the shapes. I usually don't like to use those. So I will left mouse click hold, press the shift key because that makes the line straight and then draw and release the line shape. Um, then come up here to line weight and change it to three point fonts or four, uh, four pixels or three pixels. Hold down your last mouse um, button as you drag the line up. And once again, right click order, send to back. And now I have Charles connected to Jane with this line. You can always add more lines in the same fashion. You can add more bubbles. I'm just repeating the steps that I did before. Um, let's say you want to have children and there's three of them. You can draw another line. You can draw two more lines or three more lines. You just keep drawing lines using the line tool just like so. And you can always move things around to line it up. And now I can put a circle and then I can put three more circles for their children. And that's how you can start creating clue webs and you can make them as complicated as you want. One last tool. Let's say you want to resize all of these or you want to move all of these because you need to add some information over here. If you hold down your left mouse button and you get that crossbar, then drag all over this um, rectangle over all the parts that you want to grab together. Now everything's highlighted and you can hold down your left mouse key and you can move things around or you can come and see when it changes from a pointer to um, a diagonal arrow. Now I can make things smaller. Now the font size don't, doesn't change so you're going to come ha up here and have to play with the font sizes a little bit. Um, but there you have it. That's just one of the tools that you can use to draw clue webs to help with your complicated cases. If you have any further questions on some things that you'd like to um, see designed, we would be happy to create a video for you. So send us a, a video suggestion to info at familyhistoryfanatics.com.